So today we are going to discuss the uh, function of ventricles as a pump. We are basically discussing the cardiac cycle. We have already discussed the ECG section, uh, introduction to ECG, and we have discussed the role of atria in the uh, cardiac cycle. And today we are going to discuss the uh, role of ventricles. We discussed in ECG that basically the uh, pumping process of the heart starts with the excitation from the SA node. The SA node initially excites the atria. The atria contracts. Blood from the atria goes into the ventricles and uh, then the ventricles contract once the com a contraction process or the systole of the atria is complete then the ventricles contract which is known as systole and the blood goes from the right uh, from the right ventricle into the lungs and from the left ventricle into the uh, rest of the human body so what is the basically the mechanism or the process of pumping of the ventricles in the when the atria when the atria get filled with the blood blood from the upper and lower uh, body is returning the deoxygenated blood from the upper and lower uh, extremities is returning to the right atrium and similarly the blood from the uh, lungs the oxygenated blood from the lungs is being pumped into the uh, right atrium as soon as the <clears throat> atria uh, get uh, filled with the blood the pressure of the blood it causes the atrioventricular valves to open these valves get open in downward direction they open like this because the pressure if pressure is more on this side they will open it like towards the uh, lower side or down side when the atrioventricular valves get opened blood from the right, uh, right atrium uh, goes to the right ventricle and blood from the right uh, left atrium goes into the left ventricle this causes filling of the ventricles this causes filling of the ventricles this filling process of the ventricles has three different stages initially the blood which was already accumulated it start it comes directly into the ventricle this is known as a rapid filling this is the first uh, first phase of the ventricular filling process then after rapid filling the blood that is already coming from the lungs and from the body it directly goes into the atria and from the atria they, it goes directly into the ventricles so it is known as diastasis this is the second step of the filling of the ventricles similarly the oxygenated blood which was coming from the lungs it directly goes into the ventricles then after the diastasis the atria contract or systole of the atria occurs and it pumps the remaining blood into the ventricle and this is the atrial systole is the third step of the ventricular filling process so ventricular filling process starts here the, this graph shows the ventricular volume the amount of blood into the, the in the ventricles so it goes the volume the graph of volume glow, grows slowly and gradually in the three steps the first third is known as the rapid filling the second third is the diastasis and the third stage is the atrial systole at the atria after the atrial systole the atrioventricular valves close this blood has come here so the atrioventricular valves will close here this closure will occur here why will it close because the tension in the ventricle the ventricles starts increasing this red graph is showing the pressure in the right ventricle so no no blood is going out of the no bl blood is going out of the ventricle but the pressure in the ventricle starts increasing 
as the pressure in the ventricle starts increasing this causes basically the closure of the valves so the valves get closed but the amount of blood in the ventricles remains the same so this is known as isovolumic contraction also isovolumic contraction it means the amount of blood is the same but the contraction is occurring the pressure is increasing so when the pressure has increased to a certain point then opening of the aortic aortic and pulmonary aorta aortic valve and the pulmonary valves it opens up because the pressure has increased this pressure will force the aortic valve uh, atrioventricular valves towards the upside and they will close while they will pull push the aortic valves and the pulmonary valves to open in the upward direction in this direction they will open in this direction so the blood will start going out of the ventricles and you see the the volume curve which was the the graph which was showing the amount of blood or the volume of blood in the ventricle it comes down so the volume of blood in the ventricles comes down so this this process is known as ejection process ejection of the blood initially the initial one third the initial one third ejection process is known as a rapid ejection as we had a rapid filling first third one first one third was filling process was a rapid filling of the ventricle similarly the ejection process the initial one third is known as rapid ejection these valves get open and the blood from the right ventricle is going into the lungs and from the left ventricle to the aorta is going into the rest of the body then once the contraction process has occurred this ejection occurs in two phases the rapid ejection and then slow ejection the initial one third is known as rapid ejection and then the rest of the this is a rapid ejection and this two third is basically slow ejection so here the pressure remains the same the pressure in the ventricle remains the same at high level but the amount of blood the graph of the volume of the blood has decreased at this point at this point the atrioventricular valves will close at this point the atrioventricular valves will close how the closure of the atrioventricular uh, uh, sorry at this point the atrioventricular valves will get open the atrioventricular valves will open because the amount of blood while the ventricles were contracting has increased in the atria the ventricles were contracting blood was being pumped into the lungs and into the uh, rest of the body and meanwhile some blood was returning into the atria so this blood then when the ventricular contraction process or the ventricular systole is over the tension has decreased and the diastole the diastole the diastolic phase or the relaxation phase of the ventricle has started this relaxation will allow the blood in the atria to push the atrio uh, atrioventricular valves open but before the opening of these valves before the opening of these valves there is decrease in pressure there is decrease in pressure without increase in the volume of blood this phase will last for a few second like as soon as the blood has gone out for a few for a part of a second like 0.02 second no blood will be coming inward no blood will be coming from the atria into the 
ventricles but the pressure or the contraction of process of the ventricle will decrease this process is known as isovolumetric relaxation and you see the pressure in the walls of the ventricle it has decreased till this point so initially initially the pressure in the ventricular process is increasing no blood was going out that was known as isovolumic contraction process then the ejection phase started ejection was occurring blood was going out a rapid ejection occurred in the first one third and then the slow ejection occurred in the uh, second uh, in the second uh, process that is about two third of the ejection process the slow ejection occurred when the slow ejection process completed the pressure in the the pressure in the ventricular walls started decreasing but the amount of blood remained the same so isovolumetric relaxation occurred then after isovolumetric relaxation the pressure decreased so much that the amount of atria the amount of blood in the atria it could push open the valves and blood started coming into the ventricle and this blood that was filling the ventricle occurred in three steps the initial first step was the rapid filling that the amount of the blood which was already present in the atria it came into the ventricles directly that was causing rapid ejection the first one third then diastasis occurred the blood which was returning through the veins into the atria it was directly entering into the ventricles and finally the atrial systole occurred and the, due to the contraction of the atria the remaining blood came into the ventricles then the amount of pressure in the ventricles started increasing but blood was not going out so it was known as this process was known as isovolumic contraction process also volumic isovolumic matlab means the volume of the blood in the ventricles was the same but the contraction was occurring and after some times this contraction process was so much that this opens the aortic and pulmonary valves and the blood goes into the lung and the whole body and then after that all the the pressure in the ventricle starts decreasing that is known as isovolumetric relaxation pressure the volume remains the same but relaxation is occurring and then the process repeats and repeats and repeats and it the same process is occurring again and again during the contraction process of the ventricles when the ventricle start contracting when the ventricle start contracting the amount of blood that was already present in the ventricle at the start of contraction this is known as end diastolic volume end diastolic volume like the ventricle was relaxed it was relaxed and blood was entering here this atrioventricular valves were open and the aortic the aortic and the pulmonary valves were closed so blood uh, accumulated into ventricles and when it was full of blood that time was known as the end diastolic volume when the ventricles contract a lot of blood goes out but small amount of blood remains this remaining blood is known as end systolic volume so when the ventricle was full of blood at the end of the diastole there what that was known as the end diastolic volume which is around uh, 110 ml and at the end of systole at the end of ventricular contraction the amount of blood that remains is around 40 to 50 ml that is known as the end systolic volume so the end diastolic volume and the end systolic volume the amount of blood which was ejected this is known as stroke volume so this much amount of blood was ejected in contraction process that is known as stroke volume of the blood which is around 70 ml normally if this portion is considered a core as a as a percentage of this blood that was present is end diastolic volume then that is then it is known as the ejection fraction 
for example if we consider the percentage of blood that was ejected from the initial value then that percentage is known as ejection fraction which is around 60 percent so around 60 percent of this blood is ejected the volume of this blood is known as stroke volume which is pushed in or pumped in one stroke or one contraction process but the if we consider it as a percentage of the initial volume then it is known as the ejection fraction which is around 60 percent so let's summarize the whole lecture again initially initially the also isovolumetric contraction of the ventricles occur atrioventricular valves has closed contraction process has started the force of the pressure is increasing but the amount of blood remains the same this is known as isovolumetric contraction then the pressure has increased to that level but the amount of blood has started going out the amount of blood has started going out so the volume has, is decreasing this decrease in volume has two steps rapid ejection and slow ejection initial one third is rapid ejection thus after that two third is the slow ejection at the end of the ejection then isovolumetric relaxation occurs the ventricle starts relaxing the ventricle starts relaxing but the amount of blood here remains the same because the, these wells have have not opened yet after this isovolumetric relaxation the ventricles has relaxed so much that these wells open because blood has come already reached the atria this blood in atria it push open the wells and then blood start filling the ventricles the filling process has three steps a rapid phase initial uh, one third is rapid uh, filling then the diastasis and the finally the atria contract and the final third is the atrial systole and after that after that the blood has come into the ventricles and ventricular pressure start increasing again and pressure goes again and then the volume decreases again because the blood goes out of the uh, ventricles and the cycle repeats again and again and again during ejection the amount of blood that was present at the start of systole or the end of diastole when it was full full of blood that is known as end diastolic volume once the blood has been ejected some amount of blood remains into the ventricle at the end of systole that is known as end systolic volume and the amount of blood that was pushed into one contraction process that is known as stroke volume if this stroke volume is considered as in a percentage of the initial volume then this is known as the ejection fraction of the initial end diastolic volume so hope you have understood this uh, topic thanks a lot for watching the video